Nintendo Switch mail-in. I managed to record the entire intro without put, having my mic on. So let's go through it again. <laughs> so first thing I noticed when looking at this thing is the port has seen better days. Really shouldn't see the pins like that when you're looking at it from this way. So it's a little worn out. We're probably going to have to put a new port on there. Show you what it's doing power wise. Switch you over to the other bench. Now watch the power. We're getting 0.00, .00 amp draw. So flat nothing. So the next step would have been to disassemble enough to test, which we're already at the next step. So we will continue from there. Switch you to microscope. Well, that would probably explain our problem. That would be liquid damage. Yay! Just a little bit can do a lot. Let's clean that off. Yeah, get this battery unattached first before I start doing stupid things like that. Yeah, let's get that corrosion off there. Or with. Let's plug the battery back up. Bring it back in. Let's see, we're still getting 0.00. 0. 0. Alright, so let's continue to look around and we will measure. But I already see something. Not much point in measuring. We're going to have to do a full inspection of this board. Yep, that would be a problem as well, right there. Put that back with their stuff. Okay, we have serious corrosion around the BQ. And we have corrosion around the M92. Let's continue looking. And it looks like we got stuff around the buck regulator, just a little bit. We could have gotten under there. That's no good. Let's make sure we don't have anything around the LCD. Fan connector. Okay, so definite problem areas are BQ24193 section is pretty bad off and we have a little bit over here by the max three phase buck regulator. We will disassemble entirely and do some cleanup and go from there. Okay, let's continue our inspection now that we're out of the housing. And we got a little bit there and a little bit there. And we're definitely going to have to flux and boil that uh, buck regulator. Not that comes through on the screen for you, but it's definitely got some junk under there. All right, let's just look around. Make sure we don't have any other junk to worry about. Luckily, they avoided the liquid damage at the LCD connector, but it looks like we got some on the fan. I'm going to take a look at the fan, too. Yep, we got some uh, problems to address there. All right. So immediately start. Well, I do want to check out the other side, too, and see what's going on there. There is a certain amount of liquid damage. It just becomes a rabbit hole that isn't worth pursuing but the other side is pretty alright so it's like we just have contained spots so let's clean those off it's a bit ground pad so I'd be worried if there's a signal line not too worried about that while we're here let's go ahead and clean off this fan I 
connection isn't broken, but it does look like it is. Yeah, it looks broken to me. We might be able to do something about that. But my first concern is getting the switch working. And for that, I don't need the fan immediately. But I'll go ahead and do some scraping here. When prepared to do that, we'll try to restore that trace and see if the fan works. Okay, that's on the agenda. I don't think I had any fans. I think I had a bad one. Okay, let's clean around BQ. Report one ninety three. We're going to have to flux and boil this bucket regulator before we do testing because it will definitely interfere with the testing. And we'll go our normal temperature. I guess I can go ahead and throw up our temperatures. Real quick, while well, I get my fume extractor and stuff on. All we're going to be looking to do is reflow and flux and boil all that corrosion out from under the chip here. We're not going to be pulling it or anything, ideally. So you can watch flux and boil. the corrosion cleaned up. I'm just curious if we're getting any normal-ish behavior. And that would be a no. Okay, now we do some measuring. Let's do some measuring. Now to the measuring portion of this video. Wrong way. Right on ground. Okay, M92 seems to be okay. Check it out. 
It doesn't mean it's not dead. It just might be dead in a way that we can't detect. And this has the diode arrays. They can be problematic sometimes. Okay, appeared to be short there. Could be this guy. Or it could be our BQ. Either one is believable. I am going to measure around the buck regulator. Now these coils should be, these are caps. Okay, everything checks out there. Okay, so we definitely have a problem around BQ. So, I guess the first thing, let me check my donor board. I don't think I have these caps left, which is not great. Got one of those. Question is, are those the same value as that big guy or that big guy? That might be a good question to ask. Just out of curiosity, and I know we're still in circuit. And of course, I'm not hooked up, and you can't see anything because I'm such a great video recorder. See. Hmm. I think I may have a diagram that will tell me. Let me go pull that up on my wiki. I cannot show that to you, unfortunately. Not because I'm trying to keep it in secret, it's just it's on a different computer. And they measured all the resistors, but they did not measure the capacitors. Doesn't seem. Yeah, right. I may have to get a hold of Jason. He may have done measurements that I am not seeing here. I guess the first thing to do would be to do would be to remove that cap. Yeah, I guess the first thing to do would be to remove that cap and see if it's the one causing the shorts. Entirely possible because it has, did have significant liquid damage on it. Okay, side on the side. Let's grab our multimeter. Leads. You can see we're still shorted on both sides. Mm, I'm on the half edge. I need to be back on continuity. Okay, does not seem like we're still shorted. Okay, so it may have just been that cap. Okay. Let me contact Jason and see if he knows what that cap is. Let me get that in picture so I can just take a picture for him. And I'll be back. Okay, my buddy Jason at Jason's Electronic Repair. If you have not subscribed, you should. Uh, has come through. And he believes that this cap that was right up here by the MOSFETs is a fit. Uh, capacitance wise and higher voltage actually so I have pulled it and I'm going to throw it on here because that cap was definitely short as we saw and we will pull it from the bottom
And I'm sorry y'all couldn't see that. It's barely at the edge of my view. Yep, that looks good. Let's make sure our, our uh, short did not return. And we feel good, very good. So there's still hope that the BQ is okay. We'll see. No guarantees. Clean it off. Let's continue our measurements. I want to check a few more things before we go and do another test. All right, so we did check these, did not check these. And check our fuse. We may have another bad fuse. Wow. Went over a year without ever running into a blown fuse. Yep, it is definitely blown. And now I've had two in a couple of weeks. Luckily, we ordered those. Okay. I think we'll just to solder that by hand. You know what? While we have that off, I do want to check some stuff. Oh, I have got to be right back. Okay, I'm back. That was a family call, so I had to deal with that. Okay, let's grab a fuse that I just happened to order from Jason. It's going to be the Jason repair video. Got us our value on our cap. Got me my parts. Charging for sponsorship. No, just kidding. Continuity through that. We'll give it a little bit of a reflow when we do the port. On the right setting. Yes. We should be getting something like that. We are getting continuity. Okay. Now let's perform a quick test. What I would like to see is something uh, resembling normal behavior, even in this crappy port. That would be a no. Still stone cold dead. Let's do some more measuring. Make sure we didn't just blow our fuse. Okay, fuse is still good. Let's check all of our radio, our signal test points. Okay. M92 seeming more and more like a culprit. 
three things cause usually cause 0, 0.0 amp draw here is one of them and it seems fine okay so I'm, I'm strongly suspecting M92 T36 at this point it did have a little bit of liquid damage by it it may have failed gracefully because as we recall we did not see any shorts we'll check again just to be sure liquid damage definitely creates a lot of troubleshooting okay not seeing anything but and you know what let's just double check with the battery just to be thorough because every once in a while the PSU will not want to activate we usually get something at least yeah we're getting stone cold nothing might be worth it just to change the port first you know what? We're going, to, we're going to have to change the port anyway. So we're going to do that. I'm not convinced this port's any good. And we're not going to sit here and change chips out over and over again with a unknown variable of the port. Good enough for testing we'll do a deep clean on it assuming we can get anything functioning I just real quick want to make sure we have no shorts where we don't want them I think that's normally short isn't it normally ground I'll check that yeah normally ground Learn that are not supposed to be ground.
That's normal. All right. Let's try a quick functionality test. Let's see if the port is our problem or if we're going to change in line to T36. Oh, that seems like a sign of life. Let's see on the supper side. And that seems like a sign of life. Hey, hey, hey. And my cord is getting tangled around everything. All right. I'm going to take a small break and then reassemble enough to test. And then we'll go from there. Okay. I have this thing together enough for a, repair, uh, for a test attempt to see what it's doing. I'm going to use my battery which is full. Oops, let's not break the connector. Pretty please. Okay. Let's grab our PSU cable. I guess I'll switch you to the scene. You can watch along. Full battery symbol. See if it actually boots. So. A hot diggity. Yeah, we do not have touch though. Let me check our connector. It is connected. Uh oh. Yep, we do not have touch though. We're going to, have to figure that out. So I'm not real sure what's going on there. We're not out of the woods yet, but we're we're powering up at least. So we'll do some measuring and testing around on the uh game card reader when I get back. Okay, I've just pulled the game card reader and we definitely have a bit of damage here. Let's clean that off and see what we're dealing with. I would really like to salvage this because I quoted a no power repair. I don't want to have to get back to this guy and tell him we're going to have to replace an expensive game card reader because I am not Comping that. Sorry, it's just not happening. Those things are very expensive. They will pretty much eat up the entire profit margin of my repair. I have to run jumper through that. Down where it is. There'd be some pad left. I thought they'd gotten lucky and not to uh, end up with damage on the green card reader, but uh, I was just judging from the inside. I didn't take a look at this. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to run a jumper through that via. Question is, where the hell does it go from here? There's no pad left on this side. I don't believe we're going to get continuity through this. Oh, this would be difficult to measure, too. All right. Free up a hand here. And then you. <clears throat> All right, where do I need to be? Uh, I'm going to need my glasses.
Okay. Where's the top one, right? Okay. Well, there's one. Of them. Okay, let's check the bottom one. Okay, there is continuity through there, so maybe they will get lucky. <clears throat> Grab the switch, I'll put it back in, and then we'll be back. Okay, let's try again. Using my battery. Still no touch. All right, we're going to get a closer look at this. I'll pop it out and be right back again. Okay, let's just do some measuring around and see if we get continuity through these. Okay, that one we do. I have no idea what's what. I don't we seem to be getting anything from this other one. I may have a guide on this. I'll have to go look. So we're getting something through that one, but we're not getting something through that one. Let me go see if I can find the guide on this and if it will be any more of an illumination. Okay, I did have a guide, and I do know where this one's supposed to be going. You may have to run a jumper. Let's see if we can recover. Touch. Should be going here, according to my guide. Let's just double check. First one, second one. First one, second one. And should be going to the outside one. Same line though. And nothing. So, we know we're getting continuity through this one, surprisingly. But this one we're not. So, what we can do is run a jumper and see if we can save this game card reader. If we can't, I'm going to have to contact the client and get his input because it will be significantly more expensive if I have to provide him with a new game card charge reader because they are exceptionally expensive. At least they were the last time I looked. Something around 60 bucks. So, I'm definitely not going to eat that cost if I don't have to. But if I can fix this, great. We'll use our Pico pencil for this activity.
I'm going to put it back in and we'll be back once I'm ready to test. Okay, I think we're ready to perform another test. See if we've restored our touch. Ding, ding, ding. Touch with, with the jumper. That's very cool. That's the first time for that, but very cool. All right. I'm... Yeah, I'm probably going to reassemble at least enough to do more in-depth tests. Uh, I will show you that it is charging on both sides. It was at least a minute ago. Okay, fast charging. Fast charging. So what I'll do is I'll reassemble enough, get the speakers and everything on there. We'll check and make sure. Oh, actually, what I really need to do first before we worry about any of that is I need to fix this fan and then we got to test it. That's right, we got another issue we got to worry about. So, let's switch back to microscope. And see if we can run a jumper on this fan. And fix it. doing this in hopes of saving the customer money. I've already quoted him for the no power repair, but there's a lot more wrong with this than anticipated. And if I can do it this way, I won't charge him for new parts. Any more for new parts. But if I had to order these, that could be a problem. No chance of bridging, so I'm not worried on that one. Okay, we need to test our fan, so I'm going to take the card reader out and put the fan in, make sure it will actually plug in with the jumper, and we'll go from there and see how we did. Okay, we are together enough to test again. What I want to see here really is the fan work. Still have touch, awesome. And the fan is spinning. Awesome, okay, that is great news. So, I'm going to power this down. Turn it off, and I'm going to reassemble the unit 
Um, yeah, I'm going to reassemble the unit and uh, let it charge its own battery. Then we'll test Joy-Cons and dock and all that. We still may have problems because this does have the diode arrays. It is charging on both sides, so I'm optimistic. I'm not uh, preemptively wanting to remove them. So, but we may end up having to do that. So, okay. Let's reassemble, let it charge, and I'm going to take another break. Probably crack open a beer. <laughs> and we'll continue after that. So I thought of a personal uh, possible concern, but I am checking it here, as you can see on the screen. The jumper is not making contact with the heat pipe. It's got plenty of clearance. So no worries there. Okay, it's back up and running on its own battery. We're up to about 18%. So they will make a store run and everything while it was charging. Recognizing one. These are my Joy-Cons. Charging itself and the Joy-Cons, which is a good sign. But we're not done testing yet. I want to make sure we're picking up internet. Okay, we're picking up the uh, networks. That's good. That's all I need to know. But we also need to perform this test. Because we had problems with the game card reader. So I have a test game here. And I just want to make sure it's recognizing games. Boom. It popped right up. Awesome. We're just going to start software without the... Uh, make sure to load the game. Oh, here we go. <laughs> just took a minute for it to load. I was like, what is going on? I've actually never loaded this game, so I have no idea. I'm fairly well convinced it's working. Yeah. Close. All right. So I just need to remove that from their menu, and I'm gonna have to look it up because I can't remember exactly how right off the bat. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll come back once I'm set up for a dock test, and we'll go from there. Okay. And as you can see in the top left, we are docking. That is fabulous. We're docking, we're charging, we're loading games, we have touchback, the fan is working. Okay, in summary on this guy, we had extensive li liquid damage. Um, it actually didn't look like much to begin with. Well, we started out, we tested it, we were drawing 0, 0.00 amps. So we opened it up, began to look around, we found some... Uh, Minor liquid damage around M92 T36. We found some more severe liquid damage around BQ24193. Uh, we had to replace a cap that it shorted out. It actually turned out to be the only problem in that area. We kind of got lucky. Um, we also found the blown port fuse, the second one ever. Um, we had to replace the port because it, it was faulty. And I believe it was why we were getting uh, the uh, 0, 0.00 amps to begin with. We still would have gotten it if we had just replaced the port without, you know, checking everything else and replacing the fuse and all that. But it was, uh, yeah, the port was faulty too. We got everything to power back up. Uh, we knew the, uh, also, we knew the fan was already damaged. There was a uh, uh, liquid damage near the connector that had uh, corroded through the ripping cable. So when we put it back together enough to test, we didn't bother with the fan at that time. Uh, put it back together enough to test, we did not have touch. Uh, so we took it back apart, 
uh, looked at the game card reader. It had corrosion on one, uh, two of the vias, but one of the vias was still connected. So we just covered that and solder. Hopefully that will protect it enough where it won't become a problem in the future. Uh, but the other one was not connected. So we looked it up on a guide, figured out what pin or what uh, test test point on the connector was connected to that via through the ribbon and we ran a jumper to that to that test point from the via and reestablished connection and re uh, reacquired touch and the last thing is we repaired the fan the fan had a corroded connection on the on its ribbon it had broken the connection between the ribbon cable and the connector so we ran a small jumper small enough that where we could put it back in the connector and it went back in the connector fairly smoothly so after that uh, it is now charged up on its own battery it is charging with my joy cons it is reading games the fan is working uh, i will let the client know uh, i cannot offer much of a I did get it up and running, but I cannot offer much of a warranty because it's liquid damage and anything can fail at any time. That's the problem with liquid damage. I will offer them a limited warranty, but I typically will like warranty a switch repair for a year. But I can't warranty this for a year. I can't warranty liquid damage that long because you just never know. But anyway, successful repair. If you have any questions about the equipment I use, they're in the description below. Uh, they're all linked down there. Uh, if you like this type of video, hit the like button on your way out if you would do me a, a big favor. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I post about two videos a week at this point. And that's really all I have to ask of you. I really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.